Hello, everybody. It's Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Welcome to today's video. I'm so excited to share with you seven more Dollar Tree Christmas DIYs. These are a farmhouse religious Christmas DIY theme. I hope you guys enjoy these. Let's get into the video. My first DIY is a new advent wreath to use this year. I'm using a metal tray, four little buckets, some moss, these poster numbers, and some floral. So you can use two of the dollar trays. You would just probably want to double them up. I'm gonna go ahead and use this $5 tray I got at Dollar General. I like that it has handles so I can move my advent wreath from place to place if I need to. So these metal buckets I'm using are from Ikea. They were about a dollar. You can use clay pots from Dollar Tree. You can use the metal buckets from Dollar Tree, whatever you have on hand. So number them one through four and then put some floral foam in them. I am using these tall taper candles and here you can see I made like an impression of the bottom of the candle and then I'm using a little um, craft knife to kind of carve out that hole. And then once I dump all those floral foam shavings, I will then stick my candle down into that hole so it's nice and secure and is not going to move around when it's lit. So do that to all four of your candles. Then I'm taking some of the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and after applying just a little bit of hot glue to the top of the foam, I'm going to cover up the floral foam with the reindeer moss coming almost up to the top of the level of the bucket. And I'm going to do this again for all four of my candles and my buckets. So you can see here I used some greenery and some pine cones. I had to make sure though that it wasn't too high to cover up the numbers. So you will see in a minute, I'm going to take some of that greenery out. But I also have some of these little packages of the cinnamon pine cones from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a couple of the large ones around the outside of my tray and then some of the small ones in the moss. I'm going for kind of a neutral theme here with my advent wreath, but then I am going to add in some of these red and white berry picks. And this is what my advent wreath looks like. If you're not familiar, you light one candle each week. The second week you light the first two candles. And my next DIY is going to tie into this in just one second. So that second DIY I am going to make some ornaments to go along with this Advent devotional I'm going to do this year called Unwrapping the Names of Jesus. You can see some of the other supplies I'm going to use there. So I ordered this book from Amazon and what I like about it is for each week of Advent it covers five names for Jesus. And so what I wanted to do is make a little ornament with each of those names. So this I will put in the description box. These are a printable that have some of the names that are covered in this book. So I'm going to make 20 ornaments and I'm going to do that using four of the tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to wood glue them together. Here you can see my 20 ornaments made of four blocks. And I am going to use my antique wax and I'm going to use that on the front, the back, and all the sides. So again with this, you brush it on, let it sit for a second, and then go ahead and wipe off the excess, and you're left with a nice, beautiful, dark wood stained color. Once 
Once those were dry, I did decide the front of my ornament was going to be white. This is because I'm going to be writing those names with black and so I wanted them to really stand out. So I'm being really careful here to try and keep the white paint just on the top. It's okay if you get a little on the side, you can just sand it gently once they're all dry like this. I did go ahead and give them a coat of matte finish Mod Podge just on the top. This is just going to make it easier to write with my Sharpie. So here you can see again the book and the different names for Jesus that we'll be covering in this Advent devotional during December. The ones that you see on top of the blocks are the ones from that printable. So wherever those blank blocks are, I'm just going to have to write it kind of in my own style. But I just took my black Sharpie and went ahead and did all of these names that were on the printable. I just kind of copied it myself. You could um, Mod Podge these to the front of your ornaments if you wanted, but because there were some that weren't in this set, I just decided to go ahead and handwrite all 20 of them just in different font styles. So once I had written all 20 and they were dry, this is how I tied the jute twine to hang them with. I attached a little bit of hot glue there at the bottom so the string wouldn't move around. And then I am going to go ahead and double knot this. Then I'm going to take that string and just kind of attach some hot glue there too. And then this is about how long I want the hanger to be. So now I'm gonna wrap it around the bottom again and just a little dab of hot glue and go ahead and double knot this side. So it's very simple. I love the simple farmhouse look of these with the white, the white and black and the wood and the jute twine. And so I went ahead and did a hanger like this on all 20 of my ornaments. And here's what most of them look like hanging up. And then the rest of them are down there. So some are with uh, print, some are with more of a cursive like script. And I'm just super excited to do this Advent devotional this year with my husband and the kids and talk about these names for Jesus. My third project for today, I'm using one of these tag signs, more tumbling tower blocks, more wood glue and antique wax and chalk paint. And the nativity ornament is optional, you'll see here. Scraping off all that glitter, I'm gonna go ahead and find the center point there at the top once I remove the hanger and draw a line from that center point to the top of the side. So instead of this being a tag shape, I want it to be a house shape. So I'm scoring a little bit with my utility knife from Dollar Tree, and then I'm going to just break off each of those two corners and then just clean up the edge with the scissors. Now, when I did break off those corners, a lot of the front graphic paper peeled off. So I decided to just go ahead and finish that. This is going to save me the step of painting the front of this white. I was going to do that, but since the paper came off really nicely, I'm just going to keep that paper on the front. Now with my tumbling tower blocks, I'm gonna make the frame for my house. So I'm making two, I'm making pairs of tumbling tower blocks, and then I'm gonna have four sets of five pairs and two sets of three pairs. You'll see here, I'm just going to glue these in pairs on the fronts together. So I'm using 52 tumbling tower blocks, which if you get the new tall box, you can do this with one. All right, now that my pairs are all glued together, I'm gonna make my columns. So I'm gonna make two columns that have three pairs each, and then four columns that have five pairs each. There you can see they're all matched up there. And then we'll move back to our house. I wanted this background to have a little bit of a shiplap look, so I'm just taking my pencil and marking this off in even sections. I 
think it was 11 inches. So I'm doing five and a half and then two and three quarter and eight and a quarter. And then just drawing those pencil lines to give a little bit of character to the back of this house shape. And like I did in last week's Nativity DIY, just smudging out that pencil. Now I'm taking my dried columns of Tumbling Tower Blocks and I'm going to give all of these a coat of my truffle chalk paint. Because this is paper, I did go ahead and put a layer of matte finish Mod Podge on top just so the paper wouldn't maybe tear more or get marks on it that I couldn't wipe off. So matte finish Mod Podge and then let that dry completely. I liked the saying, true love was born in a stable. So I just found this on a Google search, printed it out, and I'm going to use some of my carbon tracing paper here and the stylus. I got this from Amazon. It's amazing. You guys know I used to do the scribble with pencil on the back, and this is just so much faster and easier. So just tracing around all of these words with my stylus onto the back of this house. And here I'll show you what it looks like. Nice and dark and easy to read. And I'm just gonna fill all that in with a black Sharpie marker. Next, I'm just going to take my tumbling tower blocks that I made into columns and I'm gonna glue them all around the house. Now the base of the house will have a set on the front and the back just so that it can stand up. And the rest I'm going to glue around the edges like this to make it a cute little house shape. And I thought a little wooden star was a perfect way to hide the fact that the roof did not completely touch at the top. So just a little wood star. I believe this is from a pack from Michaels. And again, I did put that last row of tumbling tower blocks on the back side of the base so that our little house can stand up on a shelf or table. Now, if you don't have a nativity set, you can set this next to you. You could add this ornament from Hobby Lobby or any sort of little nativity that you find. I know Dollar General and Walmart have some as well. And here you can see I added a few little red hearts around the word love, but I literally am in love with this. I, it's so simple and cute and farmhouse, and I just love it with that little unfinished wood nativity sitting there. So I hope you like it too. For the next project, I'm using two of the hanging wooden stars from Dollar Tree, some more chalk paint and Mod Podge and a Sharpie. And I'm also gonna use the antique wax again and I printed this sheet music out um, just as a Google image search and I printed it on 11 by 17 paper. Now these stars are 12 inches wide, so that is why I'm going around the edges with some white chalk paint because I don't think my sheet music paper is going to be able to go to cover the star all the way. Now, if you could find some scrapbook paper, 12 by 12 scrapbook paper, that was music, then you could um, be able to cover these stars completely. But here I'm just tracing it out on the music paper and then I'm just going to cut that out and then we will Mod Podge it onto the front of the star. And we're gonna do this with both of our stars. Now, once that paper is completely dried, you've seen me do this before, I'm just taking the sanding sponge and in a downward motion, I'm just cleaning up the edges of where the paper might be hanging over a little bit. I did want to help cover up those edges, those corners or points that didn't have paper and antique this up a little bit more. So I'm using the antique wax, going around the edges and then rubbing it out, smudging it, 
just to make this look a little older and I will do a little bit on the inside as well. Again, from a Google image search, I found the words Silent Night, Holy Night and using my carbon tracing paper again, I'm just going to trace around those words and then be able to fill those in with Sharpie marker. And here's what they look like with the words. You know me, I like my projects to look finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the antique wax completely covering the back side of each of my stars just to make them look, like I said, more finished and complete. So brushing it on and wiping it off, doing that to both of my large stars. I decided I wanted to add a couple smaller stars to this project. This was one of those that kind of evolved as I was working on it. So I've got those stars are from Walmart and then the smaller ones were from Michaels. Now this is a dowel that I had, but you could use um, a handle from a mop from Dollar Tree or the handle from the toilet plungers they have. I'm just painting that black. Now using some of my Dollar Tree twine, I'm going to make hangers for all of my stars. And the idea is I'm going to hang them from the black dowel at different lengths. And then this will um, be able to hang on a wall with all these cute different stars and the two that say Silent Night, Holy Night. I did decide to add a small one to each of the larger stars. Here I'm just hot gluing those on. And then we will hang all the rest of the stars from the black dowel. Then I just used a piece of my nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I made sure to hot glue it to secure it to the dowel so it wouldn't slide around. And then this is how I will hang this. I guess it's like a mobile, mobile kind of, where it's all just gonna kind of hang at different lengths. And I love how this turned out. I didn't have any vision of it when I started. I was just going to do the big stars, but I absolutely love this with all the little stars hanging at different lengths. And I hope you guys like it too. For project number five, I'm going to use one of these big thick round um, ornaments some straw and one of these terrarium hanging planters, a wood bead and a tumbling tower block. So I saw on Heidi Sambul's channel, she made a little nativity ornament by cutting a hole in a round plastic ornament. Well, I remembered I had this terrarium, hanging terrarium planter. So I'm gonna take that same idea, but make it a little bit different, not an ornament. This is going to be a decor piece. So the first thing I'm doing is taking this thick round wood ornament and painting it truffle brown. Then I'm going to make my baby Jesus with a tumbling tower block and a wood bead that I'm going to hot glue to the top of the tumbling tower block. Next, taking some white felt that I had in my stash, I'm going to cut a long white piece and I'm just going to kind of wrap this around the body so that it looks like the swaddling clothes for baby Jesus. I decided I needed a little piece to kind of cover the bottom. So I have this piece first going up the back and up around the front, then wrapping this one all the way around to make his swaddling clothes. Taking my hot glue, I'm just putting a generous amount on the bottom, the flat bottom of this planter and hot gluing that to the center of my wooden base there that I painted brown and just kind of sanded the edges a little bit. Then where the hanger is, I'm going to put some hot glue on there and attach one of my small stars again that I painted gold. And this will be the star above baby Jesus. Next, I'm taking some of this Excelsior, how do you say it, Excelsior grass, and I'm not even putting glue in there. I'm just going to stick a chunk of that into the bottom 
of this planter and I kind of angled it up a little bit in the back. And then we're going to place our little baby Jesus inside the hay. He's not hot glued either. So I could have ended here, but then I decided I wanted this to say away in a manger. So I used some small gold letter stickers that I had on hand. I liked the gold because it kind of matched the star and just starting at the middle, placed those all around to say away in a manger. And I just think this is the cutest little simple nativity. This would be a great craft to do with kids. I think I might make some more of these next year and sell them in my craft show. So let me know what you guys think about this. And do you guys still have these planters in your stores? My last two are going to be two ornaments. So again, using one of these wood circles and just some different paints, I'm going to recreate um, an ornament that I saw. I think it was on Etsy, but it was just a really cute painted um, silhouette of nativity. Now, I decided to first go ahead and paint this entire thing black and then I'm going to use some dark blue and some white and there is no right or wrong way to do this. Basically what I'm trying to do is have the dark blue on the outside and then have it get lighter, lighter, lighter until white in the middle. So this does take some playing around with to um, kind of just keep adding a little bit of white and make a slightly smaller circle. And anyway, I'll just be quiet and you guys can just watch what I did. So you can definitely see this is just one of those things where you just keep playing with it and adding paint until you get it how you want it. But this is actually really fun. It's kind of therapeutic. I think I might make a couple more of these. So once you have the kind of ombre effect how you want it, then <laughs> adding a little bit more white and just spiraling it out. Then I'm going to go ahead once I have it how I want it give it a coat of matte finish Mod Podge because I am going to be drawing the nativity shape again with a Sharpie marker. So once that's dry, here we go. I'm going to just add kind of a hill and color that in with the Sharpie and then start drawing the stable. And then you'll see baby Jesus, Joseph, and then Mary and then we'll add the star to the top. And here's how the finished ornament turned out. You could put another layer of Mod Podge over the top if you'd like. 
I think this is so pretty and simple and anybody really can draw this. Just use the picture as inspiration. The last ornament is a very simple one using clothes pins, some floral wire, again, a little bit of felt and a little wood star. So I've seen this ornament made using the old fashioned clothes pins that are just like um, have the ball on the top that can be the head, but I wanted to make a version using Dollar Tree clothes pins to try and see if I could do it with Dollar Tree items. Again, using one of my little gold stars, I'm painting it, or <laughs> wood stars, I'm painting it gold. You could use the stickers that come from Dollar Tree at Christmas time. Using my little miter box and my little saw, I'm going to cut here to make baby Jesus. And then for Mary, I'm just going to cut, you know, a couple little, what's that maybe like one and a half to two centimeters off the bottom just to make Joseph and Mary be at different heights. And then baby Jesus will go across them. So again, using some felt, this time I'm just going to cut a piece, the height of his body and wrap it around and hot glue it and we'll be good to go with baby Jesus. Next, I'm going to attach Joseph and Mary together again at the slightly different heights there, just with a tiny little bit of hot glue. And then I'm going to take my floral wire here and make kind of a loop at the top. This is going to hold the star above their heads. And so once I have it the length I want, I'm going to twist it a little bit. And then I'm going to wrap it a couple of times around Joseph and Mary's bodies like this. Snip it and then attach it with just a little dab of hot glue so that it stays in place. Then we'll glue baby Jesus across the front there and that hides that wire at the front. Then the last step is just to glue the star to the top of the wire and then we'll be ready to add a jute string hanger. You can see I kind of crisscrossed the jute string um, to make the little hanger there. And I just love how simple and neutral this is. Well, you guys, thanks again so much for joining me on my channel for these seven farmhouse religious Christmas DIYs. Please let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. If you are new to my channel, I hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And everybody hit that bell and make sure your notifications are set to all.